After Friday's labor print, New York Fed President John Williams saying that current economic conditions call for adjusted monetary policy, noting that, quote, the risks to our two goals are now in better balance. This week, investors will get a read on the other side of the Federal Reserve's dual mandate with CPI and PPI inflation prints. Here to discuss, we want to bring in Preston Caldwell, Morningstar's chief U.S. economist. Preston, it's great to have you here. So I think the big debate is whether or not the Fed is likely to ease gradually or if it makes more sense maybe to front load some of those rate cuts. What do you think and why? Yeah, so I mean, there's a significant number of market participants who are expecting a rate cut of, of 50 basis points in the upcoming meeting. Um, and indeed, the typical market participant expects at least one 50 basis point rate cut by December. But I, I don't think that's likely. I, I do think the Fed will cut every meeting the rest of this year, but just by 25 basis points each. I don't think they're in that much of a hurry. You know, for one thing, the bond market has already started to price in to a greater degree uh, more rate cuts than previously. So that means bond yields have fallen. And, and that will already start to work its way into the economy, um, stimulating borrowing and, and other aspects of the economy. So that that's kind of actually already front loading the impact of monetary policy easing and reducing the need for the Fed to hurry. And I also don't think that the, the labor market is about to fall off a cliff. OK, and so if not about to fall off a cliff, maybe then just kind of get to a normalization point. And if so, what does that normalization look like? Right. So, I mean, I, I think we, we have been on the path to normalization, you know, insofar as this, uh, you know, these you know, record high job openings that we saw and a very high rate of hiring has has gone back to normal. And so as a consequence, wage growth has trended back to levels consistent with 2 percent inflation. Um, so we're really most of the way normalized in the labor market now. Uh, we have seen this recent uptick in the unemployment rate triggering the so-called SOM rule. Um, I'm not as worried about that as, as some people are. I think to the extent that it's real and, and to be clear, you know, the underlying source data um, uh, from other parts of the, um, of the jobs data is pointing in a contradictory direction to some extent. But to the extent we do have a genuine increase in unemployment of that magnitude, I think it's driven chiefly by increased labor supply and not by layoffs. And so we're not likely to get into this vicious cycle, or, or certainly we're not right now in this vicious cycle of job cuts and, and cuts in spending that tend to accompany uh, layoffs um, mm -hmm. that, so Preston, that can really destabilize an economy. So Preston, then what do you think economic growth will maybe more accurately look like than here over the coming quarters? Well, I, I do think we're we're headed for a mild slowdown, but you know, I mean, GDP growth has uh, was at three percent year over year in the second quarter, so it's still very strong. Um, and and again, you know, it's it, it would be odd to have the labor market collapse even while the uh, while, while GDP is growing strongly. Normally, the labor market is a lagging indicator with respect to GDP growth. But yeah, we do expect GDP growth to trend down to roughly one and a half percent year over year by the third quarter of 2025. Um, so that should be sufficient to uh, extirpate any of the last remnants of high inflation. Um, because even though it's not a recession, even though it's still in positive territory, it's below the potential growth rate of the economy because we're seeing very strong productivity gains, strong labor supply additions. So the economy is capable of growing at 3%. If we grow it at merely 1.5%, we'll create some slack in the economy and, and bring prices down uh, or bring inflation down further uh, and assure the um, hitting of the Fed's 2% inflation target. So, so is employment the the biggest kind of task or the, at least the biggest challenge to inflation at this juncture or, or is there something else um well no I, I would say um well i mean you know if you just want to break it out you know the the biggest obstacle is housing um because core pce inflation um as of july was about 2.1 percent year over year excluding housing whereas housing inflation is still running at about 5% year over year. So um, so that's been the main driver. And, you know, we still have very good leading edge data that indicates to us that 
housing disinflation is right around the corner um, with, you know, rent growth on average, you know, uh, looking at kind of the third party uh, uh, indicators that are out there up about 2% year over year. So we know housing inflation is going to come down. And when it does, it will bring the overall core inflation index with it. But, uh, you know, I think we do need a little bit of it would be good to have a bit of extra assurance that that inflation is going to durably remain at that two percent target and and by achieving a mild slowdown in the rate of economic growth i think the fed uh will achieve that for sure uh housing inflation going to come down at at what pace from from your expectations well i think i think it will um you know i mean so in the last three months we were running at about a 4.4 percent annualized rate of housing inflation so i mean i think that will be in the three to four percent range um uh, in the last um, several months of this year and um and then we'll we'll drop down to about a uh, three percent pace or slightly below in in 2025 so so i do think it's 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 coming right now i mean we have already seen started to see some um better months in terms of a bit lower housing inflation play out in the data so it does look like that trend is is getting started again already Preston Caldwell, who is the Morningstar Chief U.S. Economist. Preston, thanks so much. Teeing up what's going to be a big report that we're going to be tracking here this week with CPI. Appreciate it.